This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by Howard Yermish, John Atwood, Pat, and you. Thanks to all of you for making the show possible. Coming up on DTNS, Uber's new innovation, phone booking rides. Plus, Amazon hasn't given up on voice assistance yet. And an on-the-street report from Tesla from Allison Sheridan. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, May 17th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And from the Podfeet Podcast, I'm Allison Sheridan. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Jenkins. I accidentally said from the Tesla. That was overpromising. Allison is in her home. She's not in her Tesla right now. But that would have been good. Yeah. You could have done it, though. Like, you got the power. From the, the mind of a Tesla. <laughs> there you go. All right. We are going to get to that discussion of Tesla with Allison, but let's start with the quick hits. On Tuesday, the U.S. Department of Justice indicted and charged Weibo Wang for theft and attempted theft of Apple's autonomous driving tech. Wang worked for Apple as a software engineer from 2016 through 2018. Reuters reports that Wang is head of intelligent driving at Jidu. That's a company owned by China's Baidu. Baidu. Wang is accused of accessing confidential databases from Apple days before his departure and taking that information with him in violation of confidentiality agreements. After law enforcement enforcement searched his house, he boarded a flight to China. Now, if found guilty, he could face up to 10 years in jail and fines of up to $250,000. The uh, top-level domains .zip and .mov have been around since 2014, but they just became generally available to the public earlier this month. Bleepy Computer's Lawrence Abrams notes that some platforms, including Twitter, automatically convert file names with .zip or .mov extensions into URLs now, because they're domain names. But that opens the door for malicious actors to squat on active URLs that sound like file names with those endings and then send users to malicious sites. Silent Push Labs already discovered someone attempting to do this with the URL Microsoft-Office.zip, while others have registered domain names for other common zip archives to point users to information on the risks of these domain names. So you got some white hats in there too. Keep in mind, this is not a new problem. This was a problem for .com, the file extension for some executables in the earliest days of the web itself. Motorola announced an event for June 1st showing the profile of two foldable devices using the tagline, Flip the Script. Now, based on some previous leaks, it seems likely a new Razer foldable device might be announced at this event. The Financial Times sources say Volkswagen began talks with Huawei to use its software on vehicles sold in China. This comes after VW restructured its own software development unit, Cariad, earlier this month <laughs> by restructuring. That meant dismissing most of its senior execs. Microsoft began rolling out support for continuing Bing chat conversations on mobile that initially started on a PC that's coming to iOS and Android within the next week. It also began rolling out support for contextual chat in the Microsoft Edge mobile browser, letting the chatbot read the site a user's on. Microsoft will also release a Bing chat widget for quicker access on iOS and Android later this week. All right, let's talk about those Uber announcements. Let's do it. So Uber's been experimenting with all sorts of things as of late. Rental cars, flight bookings. At its annual product showcase called GoGet, the company showed off a few more everything app-esque features. Uh, for, here's the first one. If you invite somebody to a group ride, Uber will now let you enter your own pickup or drop-off location. So let's say I'm having a barbecue. Tom, Allison, and Roger are all coming to my barbecue. Yay. But I don't, yeah, I, well, yeah, I hope you all show up. But I don't know everybody's address offhand to make the ride, group ride work. Allison maybe is somewhere unusual. Maybe she's not at her house, and I don't know where Tesla. she is. Yeah. They can set up their own locations from within this group ride and even pay for their share of the ride afterwards. So I say, yay, thanks for going to my barbecue, but I'm not paying for all this stuff. You guys live in L.A. You were all over the place. It would cost me a lot of money otherwise. Uber also announced uh, teen accounts. Those are designed for parents and caretakers of anyone from 13 through 17 years old. 
screening for highly rated drivers, making sure that only the highest rated drivers are picking up kids. Uh, live trip tracking. So if you are a third party, you can still see how the ride is going. And also offering on uh, always on customer support to either contact the driver, call them specifically, or if you're having issues there, uh, calling Uber directly during a ride. So, Tom, what else did Uber announce? Ah, uh, yes, I'm a big fan of using Uber Eats. So if you want to use Uber Eats to send a gift, you know, like your Aunt Sarah's favorite chicken soup takeout, you can now record and attach a personalized video message like, hey, Aunt Sarah, get well soon, or happy birthday, Uncle Roger. Uh, the feature is currently only available on gift cards, though, uh, but they do expect a full item rollout soon. Finally, uh, Uber announced it's partner with car seat company Nuna to let parents and caregivers request car seat equipped cars. That is available in New York City and Los Angeles to begin with. But Allison, let's talk about Uber's other groundbreaking new features. Well, first, Uber Eats now offers group grocery store shopping. So various members of a household, family, roommates, maybe a group on vacation. That happens for us all the time. Everybody can enter items needed and deadlines for those items, and then they can split the eventual bill. I really like that part, too. But the truly groundbreaking feature is that Uber will now let you request a ride with a toll-free number, 1-833-USE-UBER, to schedule an immediate or future ride in English or in Spanish. You get a text when your booking is confirmed. Now, that seems kind of silly, but, you know, there are people who don't have smartphones or are just not into the app experience. So I actually think this is a big deal. I I agree. I There are times when I have wanted someone to be able to use Uber or Lyft or, or any of the other similar services, uh, but they didn't have the app. They had a smartphone. They didn't have the app. They want to install it. You know, there's just some people like, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. want to get into that. I don't want to create an account, any of that sort of stuff. Now, granted, uh, if you call this phone number, you're basically going to have to create an account. Somebody's going to have to pay for this. But uh, it does take away that impediment of I have to install uh, something. So I, I do like I do like this because to me, Uber long ago got past ride sharing and now it is moving past ride hailing to just be a travel app. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I like the idea that, you know, I would like to see Uber work with more taxi companies to say like, yeah, we have our own Uber drivers, but if, if a taxi is the closest thing and the best thing, we'll, we'll send you a taxi. I think that'd be great. That would yeah. be cool. I know Steve's uh, parents are in their eighties and they both still drive, but they started experimenting with Uber because their retirement facility would actually hail the Uber for them and then bill go. them through the, through the facility. And so, you know, anything that encourages them to maybe not drive all the time wouldn't be the worst idea. So, and he's just got a flip phone. She's got a smartphone, but he's got a flip phone. No one, no interested in going with a smartphone. So this would really be perfect for him. He would, he would really love this. You know, one of the, um, one of the, the car seat company, um, Nuna, uh, feature that, uh, you mentioned, Tom, this is not something that has ever applied to me because I'm usually not traveling with kids who need to be in car seats. I have a lot of friends who do. And mm -hmm. over the years, let's say, I don't know, maybe there'd be like uh, some friends of mine coming up to wine country and, you know, I'd sort of say like, oh, but I mean, why drive? You know, yeah, they'd say, well, you can't do Uber because of the car seat thing. You know, we got yeah, a kid I, and, you know, that that does come up quite yep. a bit. So even though this is uh, Los Angeles and New York is is not uh, uh, taken care of that big of a market, um, it is a step in the right direction. And I know people will be like, yes, finally. I'd like to see a combination of two of these things. Now that you said it, I put these pieces together. The part about being able to vet a uh, the, the drivers a little more when you're doing it for teens combined with the car seat thing, because I know we've, we've wanted to go out and work on a deal in with a car seat thing with my grandkids and stuff, but also it even if your kids aren't by themselves, parents are a little more protective. Like I'm willing to take a risk with myself, but maybe not with my child in the car. And so to be able to say, okay, I've got this upper tier of cars I can request and it's going to have a car seat. That would be, that would be ideal. But there's so many levels of car seat. That's going to be, yeah. it's going to be tricky. You got your infants, your, your regular uh, kids, toddlers, and then they got the booster seats. So kids, that's a tough problem to solve. Uh, a lot of folks in the chat room are like, shouldn't all drivers be vetted? Shouldn't shouldn't you always be screening for highly uh, uh, rated drivers? Yes, all drivers are vetted. These are these are raising the bar. 
to yeah. say we're, we're only by default going to give the teens the best of the best. You could do that yourself if you want, but these accounts don't let you get anyone else. So you're, you're having the cream of the crop because mathematically there's always a top 10% of anything, right? So that, that, I think that's sure. all that's saying. It's, it's not implying that the rest of us are, are getting crappy drivers. Combined, it looks like Uber's doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. They're, they're becoming a travel service, which is very interesting to watch. I also, you know, Allison, you mentioned that uh, the the, uh, the idea of like being at a vacation rental and having a bunch of people who want stuff at different times and being mm -hmm. able to pool what you want and when you want it together because you're all in a household of sorts. Or maybe right, this right. is just like your regular household or, you know, you have four roommates or whatever it might be. This this comes in handy too. I don't know how much how much I would use it because I live alone, but I often go on vacation with a few people, and that's that's sort of a fun option too. Yeah, I, the, I the like main the thing idea we that... need to know. The main thing yeah, we I... need to know though is whether Chris is actually cooking at your barbecue. Oh, yeah. he better be. <laughs> Chris if he's cooking at my barbecue, I don't need anything from Uber Eats. We are good, <laughs> unless he needs some ingredients. Unless beforehand. he needs some groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, some folks speculate that Amazon and other companies might be pulling back from those smart assistants or maybe not, because on Wednesday, Amazon announced new Echo devices, quite a few. So let's go through this, Tom. What are they and what do they tell us about Amazon's intentions? Right. Uh, so probably the biggest departure is a new form factor, the Echo Pop. Uh, some people describe it as a slice of Echo Dot. It's sort of a half sphere with a flat part on both sides, uh, has Eero built in, so you can use it as a Wi-Fi extender in that system as well. You can get it in black, white, lavender, or teal. 40 bucks, so 10 bucks cheaper than the dot shipping May 31st. You know, the whole sliced sphere, um, I think the sphere is sort of the cooler look, but the slice feels more speaker to me. And yeah, maybe that's just front. in my mind because yeah. I'm just I'm used to speakers having a flat surface, mm -hmm. um, even though I have ver uh, various Sonos speakers upstairs that are, are you know, cylindrical. But uh, but yeah, for for this price and with some fun colors, I, you know, kind of a no brainer. Allison, you were asking me earlier, we were trying to figure out whether the Eero in here is the modern hardware, because this thing at $40 is $10 cheaper than the old Eero that they still sell. Right. And they don't really, I, I wasn't able to find quickly what kind of specs it is. Is it, is it Wi-Fi 6? Is it uh, yeah, yeah. 6E? What is it doing with the backhaul on that? And uh, really, if it, if it is an Eero, I would buy these to exp extend a network. Uh, yeah, my why son not? has Eros and and I th think he needs a couple of more, but but he's also an Echo kind of a household. So I'm thinking throw in some speakers and it, it, were any of them that had um displays were they also does anybody remember were they also Eros inside? No, this is the first one I've seen. Yeah. Okay. Uh the Echo Show 5 and the Echo Show 5 Kids both got upgrades, uh, new chips, so 20% faster, uh, re-engineered microphone array, uh, clearer sound. They say that you'll double the bass. I'm not sure how you exactly measure that. Uh, the Kids version in the US, UK, and Germany. <laughs> Depends on what your plan, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm all about that bass. The Kids version in US, UK, and Germany includes a year subscription to the $5 a month Amazon Kids Plus. So you pay $10 more, but you get... $60 worth of service. Uh, and they're both shipping May 31st. These aren't big updates. These are just the next model with newer hardware inside, basically. What's that song? We will, we will rock you. That's my grandson's six-year-old grandson's favorite song. That would be, yeah, he could use twice as much bass. Yeah, there you go. Good, good example. Also uh, a popular the, song with American Idol contestants, but is it really? I digress. Oh, yeah. It used to be, huh. anyway. Huh. Uh, the new Echo Ear Buds promise better sound thanks to a 12-millimeter dynamic drive. Battery life is increased. Five hours of continuous playback, or 20 hours if you use the case. Supports multi-point pairing. That's kind of the big advance, so you can pair and switch audio between two devices simultaneously. That's something that the latest version of Bluetooth can do. Uh, no active noise cancellation, though. So you can still buy the old Echo Ear Buds that have active noise cancellation. They're just more expensive. Uh, the Echo earbuds here are only 50 bucks, shipping June 7th. That's kind well, of weird to active call noise the same cancellation thing. is important to me, but uh, if you've never had it or you say, I really don't care, 50 bucks, that's a great 
price. Not a bad price. price. Yeah. yeah, for something, you but know, the, if, if it's good audio otherwise that can pair to a variety of devices. And, you know, nobody ever loses earbuds, right? That isn't a problem anybody yeah. has. Yeah, <laughs> never done that. Never once. No. Uh, they are weird looking, though. They kind of some. I think it was The Verge described them as looking like they'd been 3D printed. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry if it wasn't The Verge. I may be getting that wrong. Well, but, but what's wrong with that? 3D printed things are, yeah. you know. No, I mean, but they, that's just like saying a website looks like it's from Linux, right? It's it's not Geo a compliment. Cities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, Echo Auto, which is that little dongle you can connect to your car to get voice command features while driving, is now available in more countries. So not an update to the hardware, but Australia, Canada, UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and Japan can all get it now. Uh, so we got a brand new form factor. We got a couple of updates, new markets for one of the products. Allison, do you, what do you think this means for Amazon's voice assistant strategy? Well, it seems surprising that the the reports are that they're losing a whole lot of money on this, right? But they sure seem to be coming out with a lot of products. I'm amazed at the imagination of how many different things they can come up with to shove in, uh, Alexa into, right? That's a, that's a lot of different products they've been announcing every single time. Yeah, and they're and not retiring they... them all the time. They've retired a few, but yeah. They, yeah, the, but it, the the plethora of options that you have is is mm -hmm. pretty astonishing, really. So it does seem like they're they're still throwing a lot of money into it, doesn't it? And I don't hear complaints about these products. I think they feel like AI has to happen. They have this is uh, their advantage in AI, and they'll figure the out the monetization down the road somehow. Yeah, I mean, with all the talk of uh, Amazon and Google both potentially scaling back efforts for assistance. You know, part of me thinks, well, these products were maybe in the pipeline already. So why not True. just offer them, mm -hmm. you know, let's sell some hardware. Let's see what sticks. You know, maybe this will change direction. Maybe it won't. Uh, you know, it, it could be that uh, Amazon says, you know, our assistant was V1 of how we really think that you're going to talk to your devices in the future um, and that, you know, they're, they're just getting rid of some inventory. But I don't know. I feel like they are specifying the, the stuff to the point where maybe maybe. Maybe the uh, the the downfall of you know who was greatly exaggerated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Amazon's SVP uh, Rohit Prasad told TechCrunch, "You'll find qualitatively different elements of experiences that we'll be launching along the year." Sort of vaguely teasing that there's more to come as well. So maybe those will be more indicative of the future strategy. Mm -hmm. Uh, folks, if you're feeling social, get in touch with the DTNS audience on the social medias. We are at DTNS Show on Twitter, at DTNS Show on Mastodon, mstdn.social, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and at DTNS Picks on Instagram. And we've had more stuff going up on TikTok, had more shorts going up on YouTube, youtube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. So enjoy all of the stuff that we have to offer. Thank you. Tesla held its annual meeting Tuesday, and there was a lot. Uh, short version is Tesla Cybertruck still promised to go into production. Uh, they're going to cut costs by moving off of silicon carbide power electronics in the drive units. Musk told CNBC that full autonomous driving looks like it's going to happen this year. He said, I was able to drive for several days, just dropping a navigation pin in random locations in the greater Austin area with no intervention, and the same in San Francisco. However... What he's saying is different than what they told the California Department of Motor Vehicles earlier this year, that the existing version of the software is not capable of autonomous driving and the company does not expect to make significant enhancements to the system. In other words, it's going to stay level two, which means the driver has to maintain control. What we like to do here on Daily Tech News Show is focus on what's actually usable by us, the consumers, rather than so much on the pre-releases and the leaks. So we are going to ask Allison, a current Tesla driver and user, of its full self-driving beta 11. How is it, Allison? Where, where should we start? Well, the thing to keep in mind is we've had uh, essentially full self-driving on the freeway for a long time. It'll change lanes. It'll get on and off freeways. It'll do intersections. That's kind of old news. I'm talking about driving in the city, and that's where it gets really, really scary. I've talked on the show before when uh, V10 was out about how I like to describe it as a teenage driver who is also drunk was what it was like. Basically terrifying. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it made a lot of mistakes. It would freak out at little minor things. Somebody would pull across in front of you where you had plenty of time to, to for the intersection to clear, and it would go, oh, 
it's a big thing. It was super tentative, pulling out in an intersection. You're going, ear, 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 trying to get out. It made all kinds of mistakes. It kept trying to hit the uh, medians. When you go to turn left, uh, and there's often a concrete median. It would drive straight towards it, and you had oh, to wow. rest control. So yeah. not not good. Over the last couple of year, year or so, there have been minor updates. And each time we go, maybe this time it'll be good. And it never is. None of those problems got fixed. But we just got V11. And V11 is a is a huge improvement. I would say it's still a teenage driver or, or a, an inexperienced driver. But, but it is definitely up. not drunk. It is good. sober. Well, that's it's a, a plus. Finally. It's not even drinking wine or, or like 3-2 beer. It is, plus it driving is, is still drunk driving. So good. Yeah. No, totally yeah, but no, it's not drunk driving at all. It's yeah. it's it's much much better. So the the big things that I've noticed is that it's very confident pulling out of an intersection into traffic, and it's not making mistakes when it does that. So you know how it's kind of bad when somebody is too tentative. That's actually dangerous. Yeah. It mm-hmm. briskly, appropriately briskly pulls into intersections. Um, it's not panicky at all. I was driving on a on a pretty wide road when this pedestrian just diagonally walked across the street, and I, I know that in the previous version it would have freaked out, and this time it just kind of slowed down, uh-huh. gave it plenty of room, and very gently accelerated back up. It was no problem. It was exactly the way I would have done it. I had another st- situation where uh, this idiot pulled his SUV up next to a fire hydrant blocking my lane partially and then uh-huh. he whipped open the door and got out of the car oh, in no. the middle of my lane and the car didn't freak out it slowed down it stopped quite a distance from him and then it started trying to edge to the left i actually took control because i was freaking out but it yeah, didn't right. have a problem with it <laughs> it no longer tries to hit physical medians it does still drive over painted on the ground medians in in uh, california at least we have a double double yellow line means sure. this is like a physical median it doesn't drive it does drive over those still so it's it's still making a mistake mm-hmm. but the reason i say it's not like an experienced driver is because it it does things like it always stays in the center of the lane the center of the lane, no matter what. So if you're on a on a curve to the right, you know how you h- hug the inside of the curve? Nope, uh-huh. it goes in the center, which is fine, but it feels like you're sliding out of the lane, like, like mm. it's not going to be in control. So it's that's a little disconcerting. And if you have lanes merging in where two lanes become one, Instead of saying staying, say to the left of the side of the lane, it'll it'll move over to the center and then back over to the left again. So oh, it's that's like rude. It, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> well, it makes the people behind you think you're going to be turning right or something. Right, so, right. And then the last thing that I noticed was uh, on Sepulveda, we've got three lanes in this area, and uh, nobody drives in the right lane because it's got dips and it's got little uh, intersections and it's got businesses. Yeah. People are always slowing down, pulling in, pulling out. It's a terrible mm-hmm. lane. It loved that lane. It would. I'd get it out of that lane. I'd say, no, no, turn the signal on. I'd get it to turn, move to the middle of the lane, and then it'd go, yeah, I'm going back in that lane. This is a great lane because there's nobody in it, but there was a reason why not. <laughs> That's a really good example of a hard problem for, for a machine learning to understand because that that is a very intuitive thing of like oh no one else is in this lane looks like it's kind of rocky i'm just going to stay out of it that's not logical Mm -hmm. right right that's just something you have to intuit you sort of know because you've driven it enough there was a um allison i'm sure you saw this there was a uh, a video that went around um of a tesla that had rolled up to a crosswalk had a green light and then somebody started going through the crosswalk but the Tesla was kind of in the right of way, but, and went, you know, and didn't, you know, there was no, there was no issue with the pedestrian and, you know, the, uh, the person who shared this, I think it was on Twitter was like, what do we think here? You know, and people were like, illegal, you have to always yield to a pedestrian kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then my, my- other people saying, you know what, this is actually a better form of driving. There was going to be no collision. The person, you know, was not really obeying their traffic signals. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, is you know, this I, just my, the future of, of, you know, driving getting better? My driver's ed teacher back in, what, 1975 told me, had the six-foot fall-down rule, which I don't think is a real rule, but I always think of that. It's like, if the person fell straight forward, would you run them over? Nah, then you're fine. <laughs> mm. I don't know <laughs> I if that's think, the law, but that's reasonable. That's perfectly reasonable, so, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> reasonable if you're trying to keep traffic flowing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I feel, you know, I feel like it's like, if you're talking about autonomous driving, that is the goal. Obviously, there, a, there are many exceptions, but that is the goal. So there was these, one much like what you're talking about, Sarah, where, where we pulled up to an intersection, the light turned green, 
my car pulled into the intersection, turned on the left turn signal because it was supposed to be turning left, but we couldn't tell what the other driver was going to do. They, uh, I think they had their turn signal on that they were going to turn left so we could have both gone, but they didn't move. And uh, my car uh -huh. just went, nope, I'm just going to sit here till that person makes a decision. And I think that was probably the right decision, but that's not what I would have done. Right, I right. Yeah. Went, it's the safer tell, decision, well, but yeah. I'm going to get through it before that person wakes up and stops fooling around on their phone. Yeah. But I think I think I'm still such a huge believer in that we have to get to full self-driving. We have to do it. The child of uh, some friends of mine was killed in an accident recently, and mm. I will I will keep working on this and keep giving all my feedback and trying to help it exist because we need to stop being the ones driving. We are not good at this, and we goof around on our phones, and we we've got to we just need to stop. It needs to succeed. Yeah, that's a good point. Well. Um... Yes, uh, indeed. And I'm so sorry to hear about your friends. Yeah, um, uh, what I, I am happy about is salads that are smarter. <laughs> All right. All right. On stay, a lighter topic. Stay salads. with me here. Yeah. Salad chain Sweet Green, uh, you might know it. It's pretty popular in uh, various urban areas in the U.S., is testing out a new device called the Infinite Kitchen. It's a steel and glass unit doesn't really look like a robot, but it is robotic, hanging up behind the front counter, designed to assemble various salads that Sweet Green offers. If you've ever been to a Sweet Green, you've got all these choices, and you tell the person what you want, and they make the salad for you, and then you pick it up at the end of the assembly line. So the test is in the Chicago suburb of Naperville, and here's how it works. You place an order for a certain salad, and you use a touchscreen tablet, so you don't even have to talk to a person. Then the Infinite Kitchen unit works along a populated assembly line of various ingredients that have already been put in by employees. So they're, it, you know, employees still have to be part of this. Then they spin the salad as it goes. If there's a special ingredient the robot can't handle, or maybe somebody says at the end, oh, I forgot, uh, an employee can put the finishing touches on to the masterpiece. I don't know, maybe it's Caesar dressing or something like that. The idea, though, is that workers spend less time on custom orders and more time interacting with the customers. At least that's what Sweet Green <laughs> is saying. Uh, it currently has 200 locations in the U.S. So if this test works, you could probably expect a wider rollout of the Infinite Kitchen. As for the obvious question of whether or not human jobs are being eliminated, if this is a continued success, Sweet Green says... Too early to tell, but yes, as this process might get streamlined, fewer humans might be needed. I like it. It looks like a bunch of Slurpee machines that, that your salad bowl goes under as it goes by, right? <laughs> you still need someone to serve you your Slurpee. It, uh, yeah, a, 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 a salad seems like something that is eminently automatable, right? Because you're just... Put like even more, you might say, like, well, I mean, sandwich, burrito. It's like, yeah, but a salad is almost like just throw everything into a bowl and then mix spin it up, spin it a little yep. and you we're good. <laughs> yep. Yep. So it almost makes more sense than any other type of food. Well, it also makes sense to check out the mailbag. Indeed it does. Uh, we got a lot of responses uh, to our conversation about not thinking of AI as human. We had that with Ayaz Akhtar, who was our guest on yesterday's show. Damon agreed with the premise, but said, We have many Amazon Echoes, and when our kids ask one a question, the other and maybe another room will answer. I've caught my kids saying, Alexa, shut up. Then I say something like, don't talk to her like that. James had a reason why it's a good idea not to be rude to an assistant, even if you don't think of it as human. James says, we must not attribute human emotions or motivations to AI, but we should still encourage basic politeness. Mostly, this is because rudeness and abusiveness can and will carry through to other interactions. And Daniel had a practical reason to act polite. Daniel said, when you say thank you, you're also implying, stop listening to me. Our conversation is over. She'll make a quick comment, then stop listening for another direct command. You know, I was struck by the number of people, not not just the folks we mentioned here, but other folks uh, who wrote in who said, uh, but, but if we don't think of them as human, we shouldn't be mean to them. And I realized as I was thinking of my responses to them that saying we shouldn't be mean to them is thinking of them as human. In fact, being mm -hmm. mean to them is thinking of them as human. Right. Well, there is, is no Dr. being mean to a screwdriver. Uh, <laughs> there is no being mean to a hammer. Uh, so so 
I agree with everyone here that, yeah, like, yes, there are reasons you should act as if you're being polite because it can carry through to other interactions because it has a practical benefit of telling it, hey, I'm done listening to you. But but any concern about the response is human. It has nothing to do with the actual machine because the actual machine doesn't care. One Although little this is exactly I, what Dr. Gary was talking about on DTNS, right? Yeah, yeah. Very and, but I do I do the line the 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 printer is malicious. It is doing well, it mine on purpose is, for sure. Right? Yeah, no, it's okay. watching oh, me right now. Oh, mine is so evil. I unplugged it. <laughs> See exactly. Yeah, we're not doing yeah. that anymore. But that's printer. different. That's my printer. It's out <laughs> but, to get me. But but all kidding aside, I do I I I get it. Where you know the, everybody who wrote in is like, we agree with you. However, here's where the lines get a little blurred. You know, yeah. maybe, you know, if you've got kids who end up saying like, shut up, you know, to another person where you're like, whoa, no, no, no. You only do that to AI, yeah, pra- practice not to kindness. another person because practice you start getting too. used to responding well, a certain way. And, 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 and we should be clear, we weren't advocating on the show yesterday, be mean to the AI. No. Because again, that's treating it as if it's human, right? What we right. were saying is think of it as a tool. Don't think of it as a person. And then you wouldn't want to be mean or kind to it because it's not a, it's not a person. It's not, not even an animal. It's, it's just a thing, just a tool. Well, Allison Sheridan, we could never have a conversation about autonomous vehicles and new Amazon products and AI, either being human or not, without you. So let folks know where they can keep up with all that you do. All right. Well, I keep everything over at podfeet.com. And one of the things I talked about recently was some actual metrics I took on how engagement is on Mastodon versus Twitter. And it is ridiculously more engagement over on Mastodon. And I kind of dig in a little bit trying to figure out why. And uh, I think that was a lot of fun. And that is over at podfeet.com. And you can follow me on Mastodon at podfeet at chaos.social. Can't spell Allison without AI. That's right. Well, that's true. Huh. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Um, also interesting and great are our brand new bosses, Errol and Jordan. Errol and Jordan both started backing us on Patreon since our last show. Always a fun thing to have in our inbox. Thank you so much for being part of the team. Yeah, if you want to be like Errol and Jordan, head on over to patreon.com slash DTNS. Even if you don't have any dollars right now, uh, <laughs> maybe a robot replaced you. Uh, we have free options now to become a patron at patreon.com slash DTNS. And if you're a paid patron, stick around for the extended show Good Day Internet. Meta and BMW have made a big breakthrough for using VR in your car. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Days. Yeah. <laughs> we we will unpack our feelings on this in just a moment. But just a reminder, you can catch the show Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Speaking of VR, we're back tomorrow talking a VR smelling system with none other than Dr. Nikki Ackermans. She knows anybody does. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>